Ireland, Norway, and Spain have recognized Palestinian state, prompting Israel recall ambassadors to three key European countries. Today, Ireland, Norway, and Spain are announcing that we recognize the state of Palestine. Each of us will now undertake whatever national steps are necessary to give effect to that decision, Irish Prime Minister Simon Harris told a news conference in Dublin on Wednesday. Irish Foreign Minister Michael Martin said that the recognition of a Palestinian state by these European players will come into force in all three countries on May 28. The move was condemned by Israel. History will remember that Spain, Norway, and Ireland decided to award a gold medal to the Hamas murderers and rapists, said Israeli Foreign Minister Israel Katz. Israel will not remain silent in the face of those undermining its sovereignty and endangering its security, Katz wrote on post on X, formerly known as Twitter right after the announcement of decision about recognition. Today's decision sends a message to the Palestinians and the world, terrorism pays. After the Hamas terror organization carried out the largest massacre of Jews since the Holocaust, after committing heinous sexual crimes witnessed by the world, these countries chose to reward Hamas and Iran by recognizing a Palestinian state, added Katz. Palestinian statehood has been recognized by over 130 out of 193 member states of the United Nations, according to the Palestine Liberation Organization. NATO has no idea on how to close Ukrainian sky. Business Insider. The West already has an effective model for protecting Ukraine from Russian air attacks. This model was clearly demonstrated during the Iranian attack on Israel in April, writes the American edition of Business Insider. Former NATO Secretary General Anders Fogh Rasmussen in particular expressed the conviction that interceptor missiles can be launched from the territory of NATO member states neighboring Ukraine, such as Poland and Romania, to cover at least the western Ukrainian regions. According to Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung, both the ruling and opposition parties in Germany express support for the idea of protecting the regions of Ukraine bordering NATO. For example, Roderick Kaiswetter, a politician from the opposition Christian Democrat Union and a former officer in the Bundeswehr's general staff compared Ukraine's defense to the West's efforts to prevent 300 missiles and drones fired by Iran in April from hitting Israel. Western countries could protect part of Ukraine's airspace near NATO territory and shoot down Russian drones and missiles. This would reduce the burden on the Ukrainian air defense and allow them to protect the front. As in the case of Israel, where France, Great Britain and others helped, they would not have become warring parties, Kai Sweater said in a comment to Business Insider. This opinion is shared by former NATO Secretary General Rasmussen. The idea to create a no-fly zone over part of Ukraine belongs to the Munich Security Conference expert Nico Lang and the former Assistant Secretary General of NATO, Lieutenant General Horst Heinrich Braus. As Lang stated, Closing the sky over Ukraine would allow creating a safe zone up to 70 kilometers wide on the state's border, relieving air defense forces in other areas of the front. If West does not step up, Putin's war machine will continue to grow stronger. Wall Street Journal Russia's military superiority over Ukraine will continue to grow if Western countries do not quickly step up, the Wall Street Journal writes, citing an intelligence official. Moscow's invasion of Ukraine has suddenly made Europe aware of the need to maintain large, capable armies. European intelligence officials say Russia is preparing for conflict with NATO within the next decade and aims to have a standing army of 1.5 million by the end of 2026. The publication says it is indicated that Putin previously called warnings about a potential Russian attack on NATO member countries complete nonsense. However, in early 2022, the Kremlin used similar language to ridicule American warnings that Russia was planning to invade Ukraine. The Wall Street Journal recalls that German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius warned that Europe must prepare for a possible war with Russia by the end of the decade. He also called the abolition of conscription in Germany in 2011 a mistake, adding that it should be reintroduced. Sweden, with the exception of a short break in the 2010s, has relied on conscription to fill its army for more than a century. This year, of the approximately 100,000 young Swedes expected to enlist, only 6,200 completed conscription, meaning the annual increase was just over 10%. 
The country aims to recruit 8,000 conscripts next year and 10,000 shortly thereafter. Selection is based on physical and mental fitness, IQ tests and motivation to serve. The article notes, it is reported that draft evasion in Sweden is punishable by a fine or imprisonment for up to a year. Let's remember that Business Insider previously concluded that Russia, it seems, after two years of large-scale invasion, has begun to take war seriously. They pointed out that Putin's war machine looks very different today than it did at the start of the conflict. The Russian defense industrial base is running at full capacity and Putin recently appointed an economist as his defense minister to stimulate mass production of weapons. Last summer, Moscow stopped the counter-offensive of Ukraine with a strong defense while rebuilding supplies and transitioning to a wartime economy.